about time to give you a little tour of the the garden again and show you where we're standing. Uh, this is Kenny with Gardening Simplified, where we make gardening simplified. Over here with our uh, yellow squash, this is our crook neck. And you can see we just started getting where they're big enough to harvest. We picked one batch off of these. That's the crook neck. Now these uh, spineless perfection zucchini, they were put in later. They're not uh, quite to the point to where they're flowering. They're forming their blooms, but they haven't started getting to that. As we go down here through our squash, and we'll get down here to the straight necks pretty soon, and they're uh, the same way. They're, they're starting to, to produce, so we can start uh, picking them. Now with this heat, I don't expect these to last too long, uh, but I have this base, and like I say, these are producing really well the zucchini have been flowering i haven't been down here to see if they've actually set fruit or not they had been forming some female flowers but it doesn't look like that they've actually set any fruit yet these red curry squash that's over here they're doing well, they're trying to take over. Uh, been trying to uh, keep them contained, I should say. They, they're actually, the second batch I think, appears to be doing a little bit better and that's because they get a lot of shade. Now where I put out my early carrots, which was a kind of an experiment, this would work good with a shade cloth, I believe. But the impeters, they tend to, they were spotty, but uh, I'm losing some of them now. And I'm also losing some, some of the Danver carrots now. They're getting in there and they're forming pretty good. But uh, they're definitely, would do better if they had shade cloth. My dragon tongue beans right here they're doing good and let's see we ought to be able to find some hanging off in here now these i'm growing for seed so i'm going to let them all get mature we definitely have a lot of pollinators that are spending their time in the garden working over these flowers mostly bumblebees uh, now these here are the starburst patty pan i just Stuck a few out here to to uh, see how they did. They're not liking the heat either. They're still uh, forming some, and we picked a few. There's a few small ones uh, coming on, but they didn't do all that great. My my bunching onions are definitely doing fine. Now I've had a little bit of a problem with some army worms in here uh, and I, I have to kind of check and see I think I've got it under control but we'll we'll see how that goes my parsnips and this is kind of a bust this is I've still got a few plants that are coming up uh, now but I don't know how many is going to fill in this area. I might uh, sow something else in here with these a little bit later, but I'm kind of on hold on that. My uh, hoppy turquoise corn is uh, pollinating, and and uh, hopefully we'll have some some uh, pretty decent ears form on this but this is for seed too uh, I might use a little bit of it 
Now right here, I've actually used a doubled up bug barrier to, to uh, give a little bit of shade to my strawberries. Uh, I've lost about 50% of them, which this is not the best time to put in strawberries. And I've got some shade cloth ordered. Uh, but definitely with our heat up in the mid to upper 90s, it's definitely not the best time. Uh, and plus, they, they would need shade cloth through this time of the year. Now we've got some uh, cucumbers right here. And, and they're growing, but they aren't growing all that great. Uh, I've been thinking about just taking them out and uh, planting something else here. And I still might do that. Uh, but the ones that I planted later, and I'll show that in just a second, are, are as big as these are bigger. And they were planted probably almost 30 days behind these. Now my uh, Cherokee purple tomatoes are hanging in there. I do need to trim these dead leaves off the, the bottom, these dead branches. Uh, they're still setting occasional fruit. Of course, the quality with the heat and trying to maintain even moisture on these is, is not the greatest. Uh, but we'll let them go and, and let them grow and hope that they, they uh, do better once it cools down a little bit. Of course the jalapenos are are definitely still producing the plants never looked that great to me but they've really done a a good job of of uh, producing jalapenos the size is a little small but uh that flavor is still the same and of course cherry tomatoes they they'll stay producing the whole season and it's the same with the uh uh, bell pepper here they the plants have not looked that great this year for some reason they seem to uh, stay pale even though I tried to uh, dose them up with some nitrogen I think there's probably have a problem with root root knot nematodes and that's probably affecting their growth now this bed here we're fixing to uh, move it. We've almost got it cleaned out. I've got a few arugula here going to seed. I figure I'll go ahead and catch the seed, but you can see these pods are basically like a mustard or turnip would do. They'll set a pod with multiple seeds, and then once they mature, you just uh, save them for next year. These are the cucumbers that were planted about three weeks to a month after the others. And like I say, they're just doing so much better. Uh, and these smaller ones are Armenian cucumbers. Uh, these are not that old, uh, less than two weeks. And they're really doing good the only one that's not there is here and that was because the dog decided there was a mole down there it wanted to get to over here are the other uh, red curry squash and like Seth these tend to be doing a lot bigger uh, or better the row is uh, between seven eight foot wide Already it's kind of uh, have to go through regular and make sure that the zipper cream peas and the uh, red curry are separated. So I'll still be able to get down there and pick that row. These have been blooming and they should be setting some uh, peas pretty soon. Now we actually, we've put out some uh, transplants here and we're gonna keep them under shade cloth so that they uh, do better. Of course, I have a problem with my other 
cilantro not really growing. This one I had planted in a pot and I set it up under the shade claw. We have uh, beets up under here. Uh, they're sown fairly close, so it might not, it might be more beet greens than the beets themselves. And then we have some rainbow chard that the plants are set out. And we've actually, we took our uh, regular chard, our Swiss chard, and uh, we transplanted it. They were bigger plants that we had up in that other bed, but we went ahead and uh, dug them up, uh, stripped most of the leaves, and transplanted them in here. All the marigolds that was moved, uh, except where we broken limbs when we were moving them, seem to be doing pretty good and keeping extra pollinators in the the uh, garden here. Our water system that we just put in, uh, so we wouldn't have be dragging hoses and could separate the different drip systems a little bit better. Uh, we kind of had some of them a little overloaded and it was just easier to put water lines where we wanted them so we would have available water at different areas of the garden as we upgraded and plus running an electric wire to the greenhouse. The Green beans here, these are Blue Lake, and they're starting to, to bloom now, so it won't be long, we'll have green beans on there. These Mississippi Silver Skin are, they're really setting the pea pods. It, it won't be long now, we'll be trying to harvest in amongst this where they've grown all together. Also, the lima beans have uh, started blooming. I haven't noticed any pods yet, and they're just kind of random blooming, but I can see a lot of buds setting. The uh, BBR purple hole peas are setting a lot of blooms and, and uh, setting pods. They're doing really good. It won't be long. We'll be uh, harvesting pretty good out of these. Over here behind us, the watermelons. We've we've been digging them out. We're we're basically we've got to get rid of this grass, and and we'll be uh, taking out most of these. They've actually run uh, from where the uh, seeds were planted. They've, they've run out there than 20 feet out into that area. Even though we were throwing them back, they just keep keep going and branching out. So uh, we've got to get these beds prepared, get all this set up. So we'll be uh, slowly taking these out. The uh, winter squash is doing good. This is the buttercup down in here. It's it's forming good. Over here we have the sugar pie pumpkins trying to take over everything. Which the the bumblebees really like uh, this. There's a couple in that one. I've seen as many as three bumblebees in one blossom. They're just uh, working this stuff over. I haven't actually had a chance to come down here and see if there's uh, any fruit set yet. I would imagine there probably is. Now as you can see the, the leaves change here. These bigger leaves are the, uh, the Big Macs and uh, they're deciding to to go out the fence so I'm gonna have to get over here in a minute and bring them back in uh, my sunflower is uh,
starting to set its blooms won't be long it'll be open the butternut squash is uh, sitting here growing uh, and setting plenty of fruit the vines seem to be a little bit small but it seems like it's doing okay we have some more over here and I've had to pull up quite a few morning glories these just keep see, seeming to uh, come in here I know they're wild and it's probably birds that's dropping the seeds over here we have our acorn squash and uh, they're starting to set some fruit I think it's more on the other side where it is and these are more butternut these were put in here later they're just starting to form the fruit this is a North Georgia candy roaster and the vines keep growing they're you got to be getting close to blooming but uh you can see flowers setting but they haven't actually set any on here so we'll see how that goes our watermelons are the same way they're they're doing good this is going to be a little bit tight for watermelons in here but uh, we'll just keep folding the vines back train them where we want them to be down here we have uh, Cherokee purples we just put these out a couple days ago these were actually suckers that we rooted in from the uh, other Cherokee purple plants and they're doing good now this bigger one it's the volunteer that come up so we decided we'd make the tomato roll down here with it but these are doing fine and we'll have to put cages on them here pretty soon and over here we got another winter squash and this is a, another acorn squash table queen and like I say the, the bees are just working it over I think there's actually four bumblebees in that one flower so, so they're having a a good time here working on those they say our watermelons they just keep going and keep wanting to produce they're just uh, all over the place we're trying to take over where we've got this fabric down for weed control the sweet potatoes as you can see the vines are dying back it won't be long uh, keep saying that maybe another uh, week we'll just have to see and we'll come in and dig these up that's where I'm sitting right now with the garden and they give you an idea kind of on how fast these plants grow some of the problems you know dealing with the heat and uh, we'll just continue to get it ready for our fall crop get our new beds in and uh, see how our, our winter vegetables do I uh, hope you enjoyed this and I hope it encourages you to uh, go ahead and set your own garden up don't worry about where you have problems with it. Just keep on going and happy gardening.